all the waxes are intermixable, all the stains are intermixable, as, as long as it is the exact same product. Totally intermixable. Um, this is the golden pine. This is really beautiful. If any, whoever has pine wants to try this. Um, what's kind of fun with the walnut is um, if you if you have a piece of pine, try the walnut wax on pine to show. Hmm? Raw, yeah. If you if you have a raw piece, if you have a stained, you could put it on stained wood. What this wax is is a paraffin base with microcrystalline and a little bit of carnauba, very little carnauba. In general, most people uh, think the more carnauba, the better. The more carnauba, the harder it is. It, uh, a piece of furniture may not need that much carnauba. Carnauba is what you put on your cars. It's, 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 it's the hardest wax available in, through nature, and it's the most water resistant. It may not necessarily be needed for internal furniture, so you can make that decision. You see in, in stores uh, butcher's wax, um, bry wax. Butcher's wax has a great deal of carnauba in it. Uh, bry wax is beeswax with toluene. Now they have a new composition out, which uh, I believe is mineral spirits. Toluene is cancerous. It's probably the most dangerous solvent. Turpentine is another common solvent that's always uh, with the beeswax. Uh, we can try this. When to use bry wax is beeswax. This is beeswax. When you have a, something with beeswax, it, it will clearly state that. Beeswax is ideal for pines. What about white? and really old and dried and reclaimed timbers. Like, I would put beeswax absolutely right here. It really can be very heavy for a lot of uh, furniture and veneers, and it can be what you like if you feel comfortable and maybe you like the smell or whatever. It, you'll see I want you all to use the beeswax and compare it to the paste wax. It it's, can be very heavy, and if it's applied too thickly, it can be very greasy. Um, we have some colored beeswaxes here. So, bry wax is very popular. It, it's a you know to a fine product, um, but you want to know when to use beeswax and when to use a paste wax. This is a little uh, finer blend. Uh, I think you've all used it, so you see how smoothly it applies. Uh, how you apply with the steel wool, let it dry, buff it. Uh, beeswax, uh, the brie wax applies very smoothly also. It's a nice application. Um, butcher's wax, if you apply it and let it set up, when you go back to buff it, it is extremely hard to buff. The more carnauba, the harder it is to buff. So you just want to keep that in mind. That's why we're, we're buffing after about 10 or 15 minutes. A wax, if you let your wax dry for an hour or two, you, you have a serious buff job. So you need a lot of elbow grease. So uh, wax is set after 15 minutes depending on humidity. So those are some of the things you want to know your solvent. Oh, the solvent in this wax is mineral spirits and a very low count of mineral spirits. So that's important too. Um, Do you ever apply that with steel wool? Yeah, I apply this all the time with steel wool. A little, that, a little too? You, you could to, to, to thin it if you needed to. This has turpentine in it. In fact, here's an example of something where the turpentine has started to evaporate. So you can resurrect this with a little turpentine. Uh, the more I put in, the more liquidy it will become. In the summer, again, if, if any of these are, are in, in a shop, in an attic, in the trunk of your car, it will turn to liquid. So, yeah, and so you just want to be careful. So in the summer, using it, uh, it try not to use it in its liquid state. Uh, if a paste wax is in liquid state, if it's already liquid, that's a different story. But what you need to do, especially if it's a pigmented wax, stir it well because your solvent has separated from your pigment. Stir it well and chill it. I've had people that have stirred it and used it and the results were disastrous. You need to chill it, probably put it in a refrigerator. It has to be back in its paste form or else it has separated. So it's very common for waxes to melt. Just make sure you stir them well and refrigerate and then you can use them. The only difference between liquid and paste is the amount of solvent here. And the reason why um, liquid was created was just for larger jobs. If you had paneling of this room, uh, floors, a really large table, liquid is just easier application. That's the only difference. So if you have a really large job, liquid is much easier to spread and apply.
and smaller pieces paste. So those are the general differences. Carnauba is har your hardest wax, and, and that's in, the wood turning stick is predominantly carnauba, the little resin. So um, a lot of people know that word. You know, beeswax is um, obviously a natural byproduct, and it's always mixed with turpentine. So why don't if you want to try some of that, if if you if anyone's used the neutral wax, compare it to the this is clear beeswax. Compare it, feel it, let it dry, see what you think. It, we have um, the beeswax. This is the dark color, which is just again earth pigments and wax. If you want to try that, as a uh, compared to um, and a light the color, oak. You would use it, uh, well, how do you how do you determine it? clear? Right, exactly. There's clear, there's neutral. We have a color called clear, which is the color of that. It's like a light yellow, and it's a slight amber finish. So we just want to pass that around. It's um, it's a little uh, in in this for this company, Libron. It's a little bit confusing. We have a neutral, which has zero pigment, and then we have a clear, which is looks just like that, and it's uh, light amber. So it will add a little bit of warmth to your piece. Just a little bit, so it, it's nice. And that's over there now. Well, it, no, that's the beeswax, but it looks just like that, but different composition. Do I don't think I have a clear. I brought. Um, I have a, some darker colors. No, but to try the beeswax clear. Well, it's going to be heavy for you. What a lot of people do, if you have the time, you can color your own wax. Um, so. I just scooped out very little neutral, and I have two colors of earth pigment here. Uh, one is the good old Van Dyke brown, and the other one is a burnt umber. And this again is uh, to taste as much or as little as you need or you may want. You're just gonna literally, oh, that's a lot. Yeah, I wanna mix it. I prefer to go lighter and then darken as we go. So just a little bit of powder right on the wax any type of a stir and what I want you to see and I want you all to do this how easy this is to blend and mix and why that is is because of the particle size of this earth pigment and within you know a minute it's blended and I can now make any custom color I like I can mix two or three of these pigments as long as I have a neutral wax, a wax that had no pigment in it originally. I can pigment it myself, and a lot of people do this. Um, this pigment is exactly what's in all those waxes being passed around. So you can go ahead and uh, buy several. We have a titanium white. Uh, there's several blacks. Uh, some are much darker than others. Um, umbers, siennas, all the, you know, all the basic colors. So. I've mixed up my own paste wax and to show you what that looks like. You can, yeah, you can apply it anywhere, especially if you if you need to make a custom color. Who said that? Somebody? Oh uh, yeah, it yeah you it you know it's going to be uh, very hard to find exactly the color you need in a pre-mixed color. I mean, there's so many shades of mahogany, oaks, pine. So you may need to go with the neutral wax and buy several earth pigments and mix them to whatever you need. So in this case, here's a color. Now, it, this may be close to already pre-mixed oak. So the, all of our colored waxes just came out as a convenience. Traditionally, this is what everyone did. So, you know, it may be futile for, for your time because you may, this may be the exact color of the medium oak that's being passed around. So it, it depends. It, this isn't necessarily a cheaper way to go because these are about $8 and your wax is the same price. It's $17 or, or $10. So it's not like you're, it's cheaper, but you can get a custom color. So we, I only brought two, but I'd like you to mix these if you just want to play with it. With the neutral wax, take a little scoop, whichever color you prefer. See the amount of powder, the amount of pigment, how dark you can get it, how light you can get it. The golden pine color that's going around, that's, that's very light. Mix, mix the pigment in that, make a custom color. Just remember to cut back before you apply your second coat. 
fine steel wool, anything that's dried on the surface, any little nubs, any may, maybe a little air bubble, something, cut back lightly. Also the bleed back, this will help. So remember to cut back on your hard finishes before you apply your second lap coats. Carnauba is derived from the palm leaves of a palm tree. Uh, tongue oil is derived from a uh, china nut. So these were all, I don't know at what period they started, but their original period um, finish. But if you have a wax finish, you literally just, with a dry cloth, you're just kind of removing the wax and any little surface dirt. And then as you re-wax it, that is the way to clean it. You're actually just reactivating the wax. and So it, it's a little, we're not used to cleaning wax, so we shy away from it. As the whole country, we shy away from it. But it really makes a, such a difference in fine furniture. I, I think I read an article by Flexner. I, I think that I got it correct. But he said that silicone's got a bad rap because of refinishers. If, you, uh, if they have to refinish it there and they've got silicone on it, then you're in trouble. Right, exactly. It doesn't really hurt the wood otherwise. You are right, because when you do refinish it, it is almost impossible with the silicates. You know, none of your products will penetrate where all the silicates have laid. So it's, it's impossible for refinishers. But in general, the pledge is very bad for furniture because of the silicone. It will sit on the surface. It will, it will eat away over time. I mean, a great deal of time. Uh, and maybe you're not applying it that much or that often, but it's for fine furniture. It's not for your everyday furniture fine. But for a really good antique piece, it's really not good at all. Shellac. So if everyone would like to, I don't know if, I thought we were going to make some. I wanted some people to kind of mix, mix some. And uh, I want to pass this bag around. Everyone's welcome to take a handful if you want to take it home. And some of it is in block form. This isn't good. It's not ideal. This happens with humidity. Um, shellac comes from um, Southeast Asia, mostly Thailand, India. It's processed in India. It's a byproduct of a little bug. Uh, you guys all know that, I'm sure. Um, it's supposed to be in flake form. Um, and this came over on a big container in Germany. We had a 55-pound vat of it. And due to the humidity, it has blocked up. And I have a bunch of blocked shellac. And the different, these are, you guys can take any of these. The, the difference is basically, this is going to be much harder to dissolve. Uh, but also there's a difference in the polymerization and, and your finish could be affected. So be careful of blocked shellac because this has changed its composition and it's not just a matter of dissolving it. So uh, you're welcome to take these if you just want to do an experiment and see how long it takes to dissolve. And also, um, I'm just going to, when I had a lecture, someone had asked uh, here a good question of how to measure shellac if you don't have a scale, if you don't know. And so that was a really good question. And there are these, you know, pound cuts. So I'm just going to put a little bit in and... Just pass this around. Just, I don't know, look at it, smell it. This is orange. There are about five different colors of shellac. Um, the least refined is seed lac. And if you see that, you will see little bits of twigs. And, and it's, it's, you know, almost right off the little bush that it's taken from. And then there's um, button lac, which is a darker color. There's ruby. There's orange. As you get lighter, it's more refined. Blonde and white. Uh, the more refined, the more fragile. It's been bleached. It's been stripped. It's. It's. Uh, some people, you know, like the color, but uh, you know, it, it's going to be even more fragile. Um, you can choose a shellac based on what color. We actually have a black today and a, a special pale French polish. There's a difference between waxed and de-waxed. Um, being. Hmm? Oh yeah, this is this is the button. Which, if you haven't seen button, if you can see it, it's double bagged, and these are kind of crushed. But it's actually a button shape, and this is a very traditional English finish, and it, they're not that easy to find. If you can at least feel it, it's nice to see the button compared to flake form. If you haven't seen button, 
And this is um, garnet if you just want to look at the color. I, uh, we're going to just make some now, but I made some about three days ago because I wanted it to be fully dissolved. And just to show the pound cut ratio, I had filled, uh, you can see a little bit, a line that this was straight shellac. And then you put as much alcohol. So I've put that in. We're going to do it right here. And I've put in the alcohol. I want you to smell it. And if we can feel it, uh, maybe dip a little cotton in. And I just want you to feel the thickness of it. And this is what's going to affect the pound cuts. This is a standard way to mix. 